by their well. <laughs> I'm not really good at multitasking, but I think we'll, I think we've got this. I think we have two people in. Let's see. Uh, okay. Some messages. Okay. I've never done. Hi. If we have anybody out there watching us, hello, hello. We are excited to be here. Um, I am Christy Archer of Christy Archer Designs, and I have with me today a good friend of mine. Michelle, hi. My so-called <laughs> handmade life. Yeah, we are excited. Michelle has, uh, we were talking about um, my sock patterns and decided to do a fun little cow. And I think this is the perfect time of year to do this cow because these, uh, this pat or any of these patterns, they make great gift knitting because you don't have to have exact foot measurements. And that was yeah. kind of why I invented it to begin with. And then I personally have a really high arch and I find that these fit me better than standard socks. So I have now, I started out designing them for gift knitting and then I have just found that they fit my foot best. So I've kind of fallen in love with the pattern for that reason as well. That's what I was going to ask you, why you started knitting them. Like if they fit certain, you know, like foot, a lot of people say, you know, heels, certain kind of heels don't fit them and socks yeah. slip off their feet. And I wondered why you started knitting these. Yeah. Well, I had, I've never been, and I know this is probably terrible to say, but I've never been a very big knitter. I've always been a selfish knitter. And so I had some family members asking me for socks and I'm like, oh, I didn't even make myself socks at the time. And oh, wow. <laughs> I've always been a garment knitter. And so I was like, oh, okay. So I have to figure out how to make socks for a lot. I mean, literally from toddler to adult man and all these different sizes. And I was like, there's no way. And all of them are across the country from me. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. And so I just started thinking about stitches and different types of stitches and how they would work together to help fit the shape of the foot. I mean, I know you can make tube socks, but to me, tube socks are not comfortable at the ankle and, you know, the arch of the foot. So I don't like the way those feel. And I didn't want to make something that felt uncomfortable like that. So I just played around with different stitches until I created something that would naturally shape the foot without having any heel construction. And it seems to have been, you know, well accepted. And I'm excited to be able to fill that need, like I said, whether it's for gift knitting or for your own personal fit issues. Um, or for the people who forget <laughs> to turn the heel and they just keep knitting to the toe and they say, wow, this looks like a monstrosity. <laughs> What's going on here? That was the That's cutest perfect. episode ever. <laughs> no, I don't know. Your last episode. Oh, my gosh, Michelle. I laughed so hard at your infomercial. <laughs> that was by far, I mean, you are so, if you guys have not tuned in to Michelle, you absolutely have to. You keep me in stitches every time I watch. You're so creative how you do your yeah. episodes. You'll either laugh or cringe, one or the other. <laughs> But when I was editing it, I had to watch that thing so many times that I started hating it. Yeah. But I would still laugh every time I would hear myself say, real Southern, internet. <laughs> Freaks on the internet. <laughs> I wasn't even trying. Uh, moving to California from the South, mm -hmm. anytime I start talking to people, I can tell that they try to prolong the conversation because they love to hear me talk <laughs> Just like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Hi, Jen. 
<laughs> yeah, we have Jen here. And I know I saw Catherine here earlier. She said she had to go check on her husband. So I don't know if Catherine's back, but um, hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, Jen is right now knitting your mohair pattern. She just started today oh, and she's mohair pretty socks. far. Yes, okay. yeah. yeah. She's yeah, pretty yeah. far along and they look really luxurious. I they look so you, perfect. <laughs> the mohair socks are definitely luxurious on your feet. I wear, and of course, me being from the South, shoes and I just don't get along. I wear flip flops year round. <laughs> and it's, I know it's crazy, but fortunately, I'm in the desert, so it works here as well. But inside, I love to wear my mohair. Uh, socks because they are just, it feels like little bunnies on my feet. Yeah. Yeah. So what color, have you seen Jen's? You said she's pretty far along. Yeah. They're like a fuchsia, a deep kind <gasps> of a jewel color. They're really Ooh. The yarn and the mohair, the sock yarn and mohair match. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm starting to notice them making the curve. Yes. It's so neat how they will. And then the ribbing on it is what really helps shape to the bottom of your foot and the heel and everything. So Jen, I hope you enjoy the fit of these once you get them done. I'm excited to hear feedback. Um, it always makes me happy to hear feedback on the surprise of, oh, they actually do fit. <laughs> so, so I have a question for you. I'm about to cast on mine. I don't know if I can cast on and talk at the same time. Okay. Um, uh, what, how do you choose your sizes? Like I saw you have foot, you measure your foot circumference and you pick that coordinating yeah, size. Yeah, and it's, it's, the sock is so forgiving that even if, you know, you don't really have to worry about gauge, you really don't have to worry about, oh, I'm scared I'm going to pick the wrong size. If you are close, you're going to be fine. And it may be that, um, but first of all, to answer your question, yes, start by measuring your foot circumference, like right at the, um, at the arch of your foot, somewhere right in there. And you can kind of go from there, choose your sock size from there. I do have all of the information in the patterns. Um, and it may be that, you know, if you try one and you say, mm, I want to try one size down or one size up, you can do that. The sock's still going to fit, but you may have to, or not have to, but you may want to kind of play around with uh, one or two sizes to see which one you like best. Yeah. And I know like different shoes are going to, you know, like I, I wear most of mine with um, my um, Doc Martens and some of them do better with Doc Martens, whereas some of them do better with tennis shoes. So yeah. just kind of play around with it. But as far as fit, these are so forgiving and that, you know, making them for somebody else, if you can't get somebody's foot circumference, you, of course my phone is going to ring. Sorry. <laughs> they want to hear your conversation. Right? He knows, he knows. They know milk and eggs. <laughs> he knows I'm doing this right now. Um, but, you know, so like I have them labeled also as like toddler, kid, and then, um, you know, small adult, medium adult, large adult, extra large adult. So if you have a general idea of somebody's foot size, you can just go off of that. You don't even have to bother with measuring. But if you wanted to measure just, you know, just for your own sake of measuring, <laughs> I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what size Michelle's foot is. I would say an eight or like I'm eight inches or maybe eight and a quarter inches. So okay. that's probably the small. Uh, I think that's the that small. Means? Yeah, small. Yeah, I think that one's the small. Okay. What size shoe do you wear? An eight. You may be a medium then. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then that's the other thing. When you're measuring for length, you can measure your foot 
and you know going across the arch of your foot and up to the height that you want and then you'll measure the uh, back of the sock not the front of the sock but the back of the sock to kind of figure out okay I want an ankle length or I want more of a calf length or whatever okay. and you can adjust the length like that yes I'm seeing you're right I'm a medium so yeah I that that tracks with every other sock pattern usually yeah that I do. And I'm also going to cast on the mohair first. Are and you? I have like for the cuff, just regular gray stroll. Uh -huh. And then stranded dye works mohair. That's was kind of a is. purple lilac. Yeah. But then for the body of it, I'm just going to see how this variegated works out. I was going to hold the mohair with this old woolen vine yarn. That'll it's be gorgeous. Here. Yeah, that'll be. And it's a good neutral that will go with anything. Mm -hmm. And I always think, you know, because I wear mine barefoot most of the time, you know, colors that are going to work well with being in the desert, everything is dusty. There is oh, no getting away from the dust. It is on everything. So I try to pick colors that, you know, for me, that work well with the, the, the layer of dust that's on everything. Well, see, for me, it's a layer of pet hair and Look at uh, the pants. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I just have to walk around all day in socks, and I have this from my dogs and cats naturally. It yeah, doesn't matter work how often I vacuum. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, fortunately, our dogs are both hypoallergenic, so they have hair instead of fur. I never have that issue, but my sister has, yeah, and it is, it, it's nonstop. You just can't get rid of it. You, like, would never want to, like, lay on the floor to do push-ups. <laughs> never. You're going to be like, oh, my God. You have the first you sweater go when you're done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm really excited to see how a variegated works yeah. up in that pattern. But yeah. I also have these sock ease. I think these might be stripes. But I yeah. have some striping <laughs> yarns, and I kind of want to see what they look like also. Yeah. yeah. Do you know which pattern you're going to be casting on? I'm doing the mohair first. I'm starting oh, my cast okay, that's right. Yeah, I only these. have one hair. Yeah, but I yeah. also want to do thistle, and I was thinking of doing thistle seeds in this. I love thistle. Yeah, that would be beautiful for thistle seeds. I like mm -hmm. the variation in that. It might kind of almost be micro stripe like. So yeah, I don't know. Good. That might feel too busy. I'll see. I'll just yeah, play it. Yeah, that'll be fine. So yeah. are you doing all selfish knitting or are you going to be oh, good yeah. knitting? Oh, yeah. But if I selfish like them, the best. <laughs> I will do some for my daughter too. Like, oh, especially the worsted ones. I know she would appreciate little house type socks. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I need to do some more of those um, because like I said, that's how I wear them most of the time. So I know I'll like them, but like if it's really easy to do, I'll do some for them because yeah. My family doesn't take care of knits like I do. <laughs> That's why it's sad to say, hello, selfish knitter. How are you? <laughs> um, that's why I, it's sad to say, but I do acrylic knitting for my family. My sister, I will knit wool for her. And my mother, I will. But anybody else, I'm like, there's, there's no way. Even, you know, even my son and my daughter-in-law, they have a busy family life. There's something will end up in the washer and dryer yeah. because of the chaos of that lifestyle and everything. Um, so there's no way. So I, I do a lot of acrylic knitting for them. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Well, Me too. Well, I'm casting on, I'm going to be working on a new uh, Simply Irresistible sock pattern. So I am casting on there with Frankie Gray. Let's see. Frankie Gray. And is it coming up backwards? No, no. I'm okay. Right. That was weird. Um, and then it is olive and it is an 80-20. That's like my favorite color. I, I love mm -hmm. a good olive and I love blue. Those are my two favorite colors. Other than that, my, my wardrobe is pretty black and white and denim. Yeah. I'm representing my wardrobe today. <laughs> my wardrobe is basically my husband. <laughs> 
I love putting on uh, my husband. I used to wear one of his shirts similar to that. I wore it to get, I wore holes in it <laughs> and was still wearing it. I finally was like, I've got to get rid of this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. This is a new one that you haven't released yet? This Correct. Ah. Yep. I am excited. I did, never grabbed my needles. That would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, I guess I should start casting on. I tell you what, I think I'm going to fake knit because I know I'm going to mess this up. I like oh, can't Are you just talk. working the cuff? The cuff should be easy enough. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was prepared. I forgot to grab my needles. Well, those will whip up really nice and fast. And plus, it just feels good to knit with mohair. I really don't get to knit with mohair. And it, so knitting mohair socks is like a treat for me. Mm -hmm. I've never done it, but I always wanted to. Yeah. Oh, you're going to love them. And like I said, if I like the mohair, I will um, maybe put mohair in the worsted socks I do for my daughter because yeah, they yeah. will just be house socks for her. Yeah. Well, I am looking forward to seeing everybody's cast-ons. Me too. I have an episode that it's uploading to YouTube now. So like after this, I'll make it public. But I showed like my plans for the, I know I want to do three for sure, uh -huh. but I feel like these are going to go really fast because I don't have to stop and think about the heel. Like I could take this to the movies or something, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yep. So I think that's why I enjoy them too, because it is great TV knitting. You don't have to think until you get to the toe. That's really the only major thinking you have to do unless you're doing now. I have some that are cables you have to, you know, kind of count. But I try to keep most of the patterns very simple and memorizable and where you can read your work really easy. Um, so. That's smart. I, I think my husband has like a giant size 13 foot and I've never made socks for him. He also likes those wool socks you get at like a sporting goods store. And I yeah. feel like he might not like, you know, hand knit. Hand knit. Yeah. He might yeah. just like rough and tumble. But I thought these might be one that I could do fairly quickly to kind of test it out and see how exactly, he yeah, and not feel uh, like you've wasted a bunch <laughs> of money and money. Just use some, you know, real rust, uh, real horse horse uh, works socks yarn. Yes. And, and I saw that, I noticed that somebody, I think it was Jen messaged in the comments that she has a sleeve she's supposed to be working on, but it sounds like she's gotten captivated by the, he, I call them yeah. healer socks. Yeah. I know that's and not they what are. they are, but yeah. I keep saying it. So, yeah. I mean, they basically are, there is no heel construction. It's just like I said, just certain stitch patterns that work together to create the curve and then the, the ribbing naturally shapes to the, let's see, Patty, I'm so glad we're casting on these socks. Yay! She's doing icing. Oh, icing is a fun, addictive one. It's a four, pa it's a four round repeat. And it just, it's like, you, you want to get to that next, uh, you want to finish that next repeat. And then it's so fast. It's like, oh, I'll just do another repeat real quick. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> so fun. So, so fun. Yeah, I'd love to hear what everybody's casting on. Which pattern? And what yarns? Yeah, this is a good break for me from sweater knitting because I was having so much trouble with, <laughs> with your one knits. simple stockinette sweater, but the edge just like it, it became kind of a game. Like I'm going to try every possible no roll edge 
and see what works. And then, you know, you'll see in my episode, I found one that's pretty good. It's pretty good. 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 I'll use it again. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, I know that I had that same problem with my Sayer top that I was working on. And that's when I was just like, I, I cannot stand the rolling. It drives me insane. So that was when I just worked on that new pattern. And I'm actually working 64. So I'm making, uh, crossing my fingers. I'm sure it will, Patty. Like I was saying to Michelle earlier, this is such a forgiving pattern as far as size is concerned. Um, let's see, I do the 62, which is a small. So yeah, you would, you would be fine with either the small or the medium. Um, I generally recommend going down one size if you are in question, but, um, and if you're using a US one, you should be fine with that. I'm trying to see what I need to be casting on. Make sure I'm doing it right. I'm glad I'm knitting right here at my, this is where I always knit. I always do my uh, podcasts in the living room. I haven't decided on the pattern. I have a pair of speckled gradient ruled out cable pattern so far. Uh, speckled would probably be really cute with the, um, or, or I've used speckled with the basic one. Uh, it's just the simply irresistible fingering. I think that would be really cute for the speckled um, because it lets the, it lets the yarn shine. Whereas the others solids do nice just because you kind of want to see the pattern. It's like you're working, you're working hard to make all of those neat little stitches. And if you've got a speckled yarn, you kind of lose it. So I'm, I'm a little worried that this is going to be really busy for mohair, the pattern, this yarn, but I also just wanted to try it. Like I've yeah. had this yarn for, I don't I know. I think how that will do really good with that particular oh. pattern. That one's not a really my foot circumference. So I went down to nine cast on 70. No, I think you'll be okay with that. If you're a nine, nine inch, uh, yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Um, yeah, like I said, I think you'll be okay. You have a, you, uh, Patty, did you say you had a nine, nine inch foot circumference? I think that's what I saw. Is that yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the large would be fine because that's what I make for my aunt and that's about her foot size. So I think you'll be okay with that. And that's just a different um, pattern. Like what I'm doing for the medium, I'm 54 stitches. So I guess she's, is it? Oh, nine and a quarter. Yeah, again, okay. I still think you'll be okay with the um, with the large. So, and yeah, you're, you have an eight foot, uh, an eight inch foot circumference. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I think you'll be fine with the medium. Okay. And that's like a 54 stitch cast on. Well, because you're doing, yeah. uh, yeah, you're mohair. doing the mohair version, which is a larger. Right. So yeah, you're good with that one. Got it. I'm liking the idea, though, of striping yarn, not having to find a contrasting heel. You know, I don't yeah. have to worry yeah. about the striping being broken up. I saw okay. in the Ravelry projects, plenty of people have used self-striping yarn, and it does look good. You know, it yeah. doesn't really, you would think maybe the stripes thin out a bit at the heel, but I didn't even notice that. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. I've been wanting to do a self-striping. I did one, but it was rather skinny stripes. And I want to do one with some like really nice chunky stripes. I need mm -hmm. to pick up some chunky striped uh, sock yarn to do that because I would really love to do just a basic black and white stripe. I think oh, with that. Yeah with the uh, Doc Martens, oh, that would just be so cute. So you said certain patterns seem to work better with your boots. Yeah, what? so like, um, I know like with the mohair, 
they slip in my Doc Martens. They do better in my tennis shoes. But yeah. like all of my fingering versions do perfect in my um, in my Doc Martens. And then any of them work in my tennis shoes. But for some reason, I just found that the mohairs slipped in my Doc Martens. I don't know. I don't know what caused that. They do feel. I can see them being kind yeah. of slippery. Yeah. But I have trouble when I wear my docks. Like I will end up wearing like a store bought sock because my hand knit socks they just work their way down. Do they under my heel? Yeah. Okay, so it's not just me. Well, like I said, I haven't had any problems with my fingering doing that in my Doc Martens, but I have with the mohair. So that's weird. I wonder what it is. It's probably something about that seam right at the um, right at the uh, heel. Maybe that seam there does that. I do have Weird. a high arch also though. Do you? Well, yeah. I'm very, let's see. Have you knit these socks in DK or worsted? Yes. Um, now I do have a worsted pattern and then the DK is the one that Michelle's working on. You can knit the fingering mohair version in just straight DK. And um, if you have DK sock yarn, um, but the, as far as the worsted way, and honestly, again, these, they don't have to have an exact, um, gauge. So if you wanted to knit the worsted in DK or the mohair in worsted, I think you would be fine. I really do. I think that's another thing that makes these so much fun is that they are very relaxed. You don't have to feel uptight about it. You don't have to say, oh my gosh, are these going to fit when I'm done? It's just, you, you just get to enjoy the knitting process of it. And then you get to enjoy the product on the other side too. That I'm so excited about that. And just, well, not necessarily with these, but like with these two ends to weave in, that's it. I know. I know. <laughs> that's not bad. I love that. <laughs> I do love that. I have found myself doing less of the contrast um, cuff and toe because I do prefer not having to weave in all of those. And yeah. I say all of those ends. It's not a lot if you do the contrast, but it's just like, those two extra ends you have to weave in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I often don't weave in. <laughs> I can heal, but I know it'll see them. <laughs> I am definitely one to weave in my ends. And a lot of the times I will do it as I go. Like if I'm just at a point where I feel like, okay, I want to do something different for a minute. I'll just stop and weave in ends on my projects and then start back knitting again. But yeah, I'm definitely a, a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> I know it's not not the healthiest, but it's just the way I am. No, I think the rest of us need perfectionists. In my own way, that's the funny thing. I never saw myself as a perfectionist until I got married. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm like the perfectionist of the two of us. And I'm like, isn't that funny? But that's not really who I am. I want to be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> My mother is like, I don't know where you get this from because my house has to be meticulous at all times. And my mom is just like, you just need to relax. I'm like, no, I can't. I just, I, I just, I don't know. It's just who I am. And she can't figure out where it came from. And I can't figure out where I, where it came from. It just is. I well, like I think, things to be pretty. Yeah. I, I have clutter. Like, I have clutter all around me, but I did just podcast, so. Yeah, well, that has a lot to do with it. I know what that's like. But um, I think we each have our area, like, that we have, like, a little clutter. My husband has his stuff he's kind of perfectionist about, so. Yeah. Oh, Patty wants to know the best way to reach you by email. 
Oh, yeah. My email is thearchers2003 at yahoo.com. And once this goes um, to YouTube where it's no longer live, I'll put that in the description so that you can go back and look at that, Patty. Um, and then if you have Instagram, you can always reach out to me through Instagram as well. My Instagram handle is Christy Archer Designs one, the number one at the end. My first Instagram account got hacked. I saw that. That's, That's annoying. Awful. Yeah. That was no fun. And I think after that happened, I just kind of, eh, I never really got back into Instagram huge. I still use it. But when that happened, I was like, I put a lot of work into growing. Yeah. You know, and your, your photographs were really good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that once again goes back to my love of perfection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I definitely like for everything to, everything has a place in my life. Well, you know, we talked about personality types and your personality type would lean toward that. But yeah. mine does actually too. It's just certain things, you know? Yeah, I think everybody probably has that certain area of their life where they mm -hmm. do want everything to be just right. Uh, and it's generally whatever they're passionate about. Yes. So let's see if I can actually cast on now. <laughs> I've got it going. It's you easy. got yours going. Yay. Yeah. Easy ribbing at this point. I, it does feel, though, like, so ridiculous. Like, I keep thinking, this is for my feet. It's uh, yeah. so lush you are, feeling. It, you are going to love, or at least I love mine. I like oh, putting I them on just to feel all of that little, like I said, it feels like little bunny hair wrapping my feet. Where did you learn to knit? You know, it's funny because I have sewn my entire life. I started sewing at a very young age and I had several businesses where I designed um, sewing patterns and I was working my, as you know, we move a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point in time in our lives, we were my husband was working in Provincetown, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, and um, we were staying there during season, which was about eight months out of the year. And then the other four months, we were somewhere else. And I just could not take my sewing machines back and forth with me all the time because we were doing this for three years. And so I need, I'm need i one of those. I'm a busybody. I have to have something going. I've been a stay-at-home mom, and I've homeschooled my kids, but I still need just that personal something for me. And so I was like, I need something that I can transport easily from one location to the next. And there was a yarn shop um, on the island or on the peninsula. And I went there and picked up some yarn. I'll never forget it. It was um, bright red yarn. And I knit my sister a scarf out of it. And that was, that did it. It just started the addiction and I never turned back. I still do sewing. Um, and I do still make sewing patterns. I got a job this past December um, at a quilt shop. And quilting is something I have never done before. That's new to me. Um, but anyway, working at the shop, we decided to do a line of clothing. And so I'm designing the patterns and everything. Wow. With the patterns at the shop. So I still get to do my sewing, which is nice. But Sewing makes, if any of you out there do sewing, it makes such a big mess. Whereas knitting, it's just neat and tidy and, you know, you work on it and you don't, you're not spending 30 minutes cleaning up after yourself when you're done. So I really, really, really do enjoy the knitting. I do sometimes wish I lived somewhere that was more apropos 
for yes me too the, <laughs> the yarn and i would love to do all of the mohair sweaters and the wool sweaters and all of that but i have learned to knit with cotton and i do enjoy knitting with cotton i don't have the issues of it hurting my hands like it does some people and i don't know if it's just because i've done it for so long now that my hands are used to it. I don't ever remember it really hurting my hands. But anyway, yep, that's kind of how I got started. How long have you, you've been knitting for a long time. Probably about the age of my son. So about 23 years. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, I got like an anthropology catalog in the mail uh -huh. years ago and it had the most beautiful mohair wrap sweater and I thought gosh and it was like two hundred dollars and I was like I would never pay that for that but how hard could it be you know right. people used to do this by hand and so I got a book and some went to the like Joanne I think and got my first you know stuff I got the stitch and bitch book and oh okay next thing you know I'm making like a scarf a hat a yeah. basic square um rectangle you fold into a purse and yeah yeah um i was hooked though it really like you said it's so good for having something for at least part of your brain to relax doing yeah yeah <laughs> i used to kind of resent all the time my family liked to spend watching tv because I didn't, I felt like it was wasted time. Yeah, yeah. So when I started knitting, all of a sudden it was like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> Let's exactly. watch another. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I agree. I was, I did not grow up on TV. I just was not a TV person. But now I'm like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. I still only watch TV if my husband's home. That's the only time I will watch. I don't just turn it on by myself or anything. Mm -hmm. But in the evenings, we do like to watch. So that's funny. And I know care. for me, uh, a lot of it had uh, uh, one of the reasons why I'm really, I really love and appreciate knitting is because I do deal with anxiety. And I think that it truly helps with that total focus if i start feeling myself getting anxious or whatever i can pick mm -hmm. up my knitting and not think about whatever it el else it is that has my my anxiety up yeah. and so it really is a meditative thing that helps knitting has always been my happy place very therapeutic okay. yes that uh patty yeah i agree and i think a lot of knitters do deal with stuff like that. And, you know, it is a, I, I see a common thread with knitters and introverts and anxiety are the two things that I see a lot with knitters. Yes. I, I also would add that like recently I pulled a muscle in my back and it was like never before. It was so weird and kind of a little scary at first. And I thought, oh, is oh, this no. getting older? Or... I, I was fine. But yeah. when I was hurting, waiting for it to just kind of relax and the inflammation to go down, this was something that took my mind off of it because I was just in pain. The same if I have a migraine. If I'm capable of doing stuff, I at least am accomplishing something. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think a lot so you of people can knit with migraine. I can, depending on if it's something easy and yeah. I'm able to like sit up, I'm okay. probably able to knit. Yeah. Wow. I'm so sorry that you deal with that. I know, you know, there are so many people out there that deal with that. And I've had maybe one or two true migraines in my lifetime. And oh, uh -huh. oh my gosh, yeah. to deal with it on a regular basis. I'm actually, I've got a medicine protocol right now that works great for me. Oh, good. I, I know someone who's had one for a week straight and none of the medications that usually work for her are working. And it really is a special kind of torment for people yeah. who have yeah. nothing, you know? So if you can do something with your hands, yeah. I know that's a comfort. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, especially if it's something, like you said, that you don't have to look at, that you can just mindlessly work right. on. And um, there are times, <laughs> am I the only one that does this? There are times where, you know, how knitting can kind of, it relaxes you to the point that you can start getting sleepy with it. And oh, there yeah. are times I will sit there and knit with my eyes closed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Glad to know I'm not the only one. I know my family probably walks in. I'm sitting here in my chair with my eyes closed, just knitting. <laughs> I have stopped mid-row, turned it, and started knitting the wrong way in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really do that anymore, but it was a period of time where I just was constantly, I think, overworked. It was a busy period, and yeah, uh, yeah. I would just be tired all the time, and yeah. That's so funny. I tell you, it's been nice, um, you know, my kids hitting their teenage years and going into adulthood and everything, because like I said, I have been a stay-at-home mom my entire life, and I've homeschooled two out of three of my kids. My first one went through the public school system, um, and it, you know, you know, everybody mm -hmm. knows that has a family. It's a lot of work, <clears throat> And so now that they're getting older and my daughter is doing homeschooling, but she's doing it online, I feel like, wow, I have time. I'm not constantly yeah. fixing meals and uh, fixing boo-boos. And <laughs> so I feel like. I, I know it's a little bit of a shock at it first. Is. You it feel is. like, oh, I shouldn't I be helping? Do uh, Am mm -hmm. I lazy? Yeah, right. Yes. Yes. And I think that's why I just went and got my little job. It's just a little part-time job. We're only open. Well, this year we'll be open four days a week. Um, and then we're closed one month out of the year. And it's just a, just a nice little side thing to do. How did your, I know you stopped doing your writing thing. Uh, did you say you started doing something else though? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't. Um, well, yeah, I, I've been doing, my husband sells real estate and I've been taking the real estate classes to better be able to help. There's certain things you can't do without your license. And so sure. yeah, I've been taking those classes. I think I just have two more tests. I mean, I don't love the tests. They're super oh, boring. Really? Yeah, uh, they're so boring to study, you know, cause it's just a lot yeah. of crammed information, but yeah. I've also just been trying to more develop my blog and YouTube channel with some of the stuff I learned just for fun. Yeah. But I got to say, it's tough to blog now. Um, it's, it's just, it's a lost art. It really is. And you are so talented with your oh. writing. <laughs> you are. You Thank are. you. I, uh, I enjoy all of your, uh, you just have a personality that is so refreshing. That's so great. <laughs> that I literally have so much fun uh, reading and listening. I when I see as soon as I see your podcast come out, I'm like, yes, grab a and sit down immediately, <laughs> immediately. I feel that way about you too. I, I told you how um, my husband will come in and he'll see me watching different things. He'll be like, "Who's this?" And I was like, "Us, oh, my friend." And then I realized I sound crazy. I sound like one of those crazy people who think, you know, the cast of Friends are their real friends. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> but you are my friend. You are my friend. I agree. We've been talking for a while now. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I have nobody. I don't know if you do or not, but I have nobody around me because I live in the desert. We have no yarn shops. I mean, knitting here, really? No, nobody does it. So I have nobody to share my knitting with. So I share it with you and a few other of my friends online, you know, and it's, it's nice to be able to chat knitting with somebody just to have that outlet mm -hmm. with somebody that gets it and understands. I, I really think that's what fuels all of our podcasts you know, and yeah. our watching of podcasts. That's why when I watch yours, I do feel like I'm, I, put, I pull out my knitting and I watch and I just see what you're making. And, yep. Um, that is totally why I started 
podcasting. I do now where we live. I have a really great yarn shop about 30 minutes away. So lucky. But I, it's like 30 minutes away and like, you know, I'm trying not to buy more yarn. <laughs> so I've sort of avoided it for like a year, basically. That's awesome. Um, but like they do have neat classes. I could get more involved. And then locally, there is something at the library, but it's just at a time when I have something else. So I think it's called Fiber Friends. So that might be fun to do one day. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, Patty. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. You are going to love Michelle's podcast. She's fun. I feel like mine are so boring. I'm like, Uh -uh. very, (laughs) very, I'm one of those people like when I, write things or do things everything is bullet points and very you know straight into the point kind of thing so that's what people want that is what people yes people want knitting content they want to know how you did it they want to see finished objects (laughs) just I have no fun (laughs) stories you've always got fun stories going on Or a cute person. I mean, oh my gosh, that AI episode with your husband. He was such a doll doing that with you. Yeah. He's awesome. He's a ham. He likes to do silly stuff. Does he? Oh my gosh. Yeah, anything for a joke. He likes that. Oh, thank you, Catherine. I love you. I know. (laughs) She does, doesn't she, Jen? You don't know how much I edit, too. I find myself saying stuff, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I probably should remove that. No. <laughs> is that the wrong way to the brain? I'm trying to do the worst sock pattern on Magic Loop, but I can't seem to figure out how to divide the stitches between the two sides. Okay, so uh, you'll cast on all of your stitches. Do that first. And so it'll be straight, like just straight on the needle, all of your stitches. And then you will count to the halfway point, whatever your stitch count is. So like for mine, I do 62. So I'll have 31 stitches on one side and 31 stitches on the other. Um, I wonder if I should, uh, I can rip this out and show you uh, if you'd like, I don't mind. I can show you the cast on process. Do you want me to do that? Would it be possible to just cast them on and then adjust them on the needles for Magic Loop? Would that also be possible? Yeah, you could always move them from, you know, like if you end up with too many on one side or the other, you can always go back and just arrange. That's what I do. I just get them on there. I get some on the side, some on the, you know, and then when I've got a little bit of space and I know I won't twist it, I adjust. And that might be easier. Yeah. (laughs) Because the cat gone so fiddly, you know? It is. I mean, that's like the hardest part of these socks. If Once you get the cast on done and get your first round knit, you're golden from there. But that's with any sock. Yes, that's true. Uh, I get that. But where in the pattern is supposed to begin? Okay, so you're going to start on the front side. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't have printed out and I'm on my iPad right now. I don't Let have my sock patterns printed out. Do you have one printed? No, oh, no. And I haven't bought worsted yet. Okay. Maybe I did because I actually want that one. So, okay. So when you're knitting, let's see, this is my front row. So let me see if this helps answer the question. So, this is the front of my work. I put two stitch markers, three stitches in for this uh, pattern and three before the end. Okay, so you're uh, you're doing the, let's see, you're doing the worsted, uh, I'm sorry, the mohair gin, right? So yeah, the stitch markers aren't completely necessary, especially once you get the uh, stitch pattern going. So basically for mine, I have 31 stitches on one side and 31 stitches on the back side. So for you, whatever your stitch count is, and then you're going to go in three stitches, place your stitch marker, and then you'll have three stitch markers 
uh, I mean, sorry, three stitches and then a stitch marker up from the end. So all of the stitches in between is where your pattern repeat will be. Everything else will stay in your one by one rib and you will just follow the instructions for the stitch pattern between the stitch, um, between the two stitch markers. Does that make sense? Does that help? I am not really seeing the some of the patterns because it can get a little confusing I put in there that you can add stitch markers uh, okay I don't see that in worsted though um, I thought she was doing the mohair oh it was I thought Gary was, was asking the question oh. about <laughs> And I think, I thought, and I didn't read Jen's, I thought she was piping in to say how she did it. Oh, okay, maybe. That helps a little. The mohair, is it evenly? Okay. Yeah, let's see. So are you doing the, uh, which pattern are you doing? I think it's worsted. Okay. Yeah, for the worsted, you don't really need the markers, but you can put them in if it's kind of like that security. Sometimes I will do stitch markers just because if I have to pass a stitch marker, it makes me stop and think because otherwise I may just keep with my one by one rib and not. Mm -hmm. Definitely let me know if you, okay, worsted. Okay, yeah, so you don't necessarily need the stitch markers, but if you want them, you can add them where you see the, um, the uh, brackets for the stitch pattern. Where you see those brackets, you can put stitch markers. Just to kind of, like I said, sometimes I just get going and those stitch markers kind of make me stop and think about what I'm doing. So from there, you would just do the stitch pattern um, in between those stitch markers. And the on the worsted socks, all the ribbing is the back part of the foot, right? Or, well, basically, you do Most have, a, few, a, yeah, you do have a, little a little bit of rub, uh, ribbing on the front as well. But yes, it is all part of the back-ish of the sock. And it really wouldn't matter how they're divided on the, as long as you did half and half. One, it would, yeah. As long as you're staying in the one by one rib, you're fine. The reason I write it that way is because I write it up for magic loop and such that mm -hmm. the back needle stitches never change. They're always exactly the same. Yeah. So, but yeah, if you wanted to divide it differently, you could, I just divide it half and half. And the half and half will be important once you get to the toe. You have to have them divided evenly. Otherwise, your toe will have more stitches on one side and less stitches on the other. And then you won't be able to Kitchener the toe properly. Okay. First mistake. <laughs> I've got my mohair is bunching up. I'm just going to need to... Untangle. Mm hmm Oh, yep. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. That's just something I need to watch. Um, I don't have them in like a separate like yarn bowl or anything. Uh, yeah. Well, I can generally make up one fingering sock in a day. So yes, these make up really fast and especially like with the mohair. But again, understand, like I said, my kids are grown now. I have a lot of time to play, but generally I can get, I could get a sock done while knitting, uh, knitting and watching TV at night, a couple of hours. Oh, so, wow. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I mean these they, they do they yeah, they they make up really fast. I was going to add to to what you were saying about your personality or podcast. Man, people find you that need you and you yeah. have quite a following. Hi, I I'm so glad you are who you are, Christy. Oh, thank you. 
I try to be, I try to be myself on camera who you would like, if you met me in person, this is who you're going to get. <laughs> uh, that's how it seems. I it yeah. definitely feel that way. I don't think I would be doing this. Otherwise I would be too nervous. <laughs> no, I think well, you and I definitely, we clicked from the very, very beginning for whatever reason. And I think it's because we are just who we are. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot in common. We do. A Southern girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where's everybody coming from? I didn't even think about that. Where's everybody visiting from joining us? Jen is Canada. I'm Tennessee, pretty sure. Canada. Manitoba. Is that on the East Coast or Central Minnesota, Wisconsin? Awesome. Nice. We have a lot of cold weather knitters here. Mm -hmm. Lucky people. Central. Okay, so you're you're about the same time zone as Michelle then. Michigan. Yeah. Nice. You guys are lucky. Do you guys enjoy knitting with mohair? I see all of these people I'm joining from Jersey. Nice. Hi, Maureen. Oh, yeah. Like Jen, I know from Instagram, is just this prolific sweater knitter. Yeah. Knit the whole family, matching sweaters, and oh, me. gets to Love wear them the all the time. Mid nineties, nice. No, <laughs> oh, I was thinking mid nineties. I can't wait till we I get know, mid nineties right? because <laughs> we're like a hundred and seven today. This morning when I got up, it was one hundred and three. So I don't uh, know what it is now. And let's see, I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? It's uh, one o'clock. It's one o'clock now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, for some reason, we are humid today. I don't know where this humidity has come from, but it needs to go back to where it came from. I can deal <laughs> with the heat when it's dry. Wow. Is it saying flood watch? Yeah. It's always saying, oh, it's going to rain. It rains maybe two days a year if we're lucky. Yeah. I enjoyed you and Fairy talking about the way Southern California prepared for the hurricane. <laughs> it was so funny. I'm not wanting to diminish. People might have had flooding. I'm not. Oh, not I'm flooding, sure some people did. Yeah. Like yeah. having come from Florida, you know, yeah. <laughs> and like even the Gulf Coast of Texas, it's not as bad as Florida, but there was it a period. Plenty. Yeah. Yeah. There was yeah. a period of time where I still have it, a running list of what to bring when you evacuate. Yeah. I had several family albums and things already ready to go in a big Rubbermaid tub because yep. you know, those, every other year. Those things, yeah, yeah. One year we, we evacuated twice. It was just ridiculous. You know what? Out of all the years that we lived in Florida, I don't think we ever evacuated. Maybe yeah. one time. Yeah, we one time. Evacuated. Yeah, yeah. We, we evacuated hard. one time. <laughs> Um, but you know, most of the time we just hunkered down and watched, watched, I mean, we loved listening to it and watching it, but most of the time they made it out to be so much worse than what it actually ended up being. I mean, the news people just love to oh, scare yeah. people and... Yeah, I'm sure here that was, you know, well, I think just plain the fear of it. They've never experienced hurricanes before. And so it was a scary thought to them. Oh, my goodness, a hurricane. But the great thing about hurricanes is that you can plan ahead for it. It right. shouldn't take any lives because if you listen to the news and you prepare properly, get out if they say to get out, it shouldn't take any lives. Yes. So, I mean, when you've got tornadoes that whip through, do you deal with tornadoes? We Those have them here, but we haven't had any bad in this. Good. Good. 
uh, yeah, those things will sneak up on you and you don't have a whole lot of time to prepare for those. Right. Um, yeah. Wildfires too. Yeah. I, I think yeah. so much of that. Even in Texas this year, um, I saw one close to where we used to live. Within a day, a thousand acres was on fire. They think it's a tail light fell out of a parked car and the sun was magnified, kind of like a mirror oh on the ground. And they think that's what started a fire that burned almost 4,000 acres of forest. It is crazy that something like that could be so... Wow. How can you prepare for that? Yeah, you know? yeah. Fortunately, where we are, we're completely surrounded. We're like in a bowl, completely surrounded by mountains. And the mountains that surround us are all rock and dirt. So uh, anytime a fire comes, we may see the smoke and, you know, deal with the falling ashes and stuff like that. But we never have to evacuate or anything like that. So we've been very fortunate with where we have moved in uh, California. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I feel for California and Canada. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really imagine yeah. the amount of acres destroyed. I know. Uh, the fear. Yeah. It, it, There's it's something sad. everywhere, I guess, you know, everywhere you live. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did have uh, the Hurricane Hillary come through and my husband um, manages a resort and uh, one of these huge, huge trees literally just came right out of the ground and fell over on the golf course. It was, wow. yeah, it was massive. It was so sad to see. So yeah, with the fires, it's heartbreaking to see trees that old mm -hmm. and that big destroyed. That kill. I'm a big tree person, so that just kills me. Well, and then in Hawaii, the yeah homes, yeah. I mean, that just uh, rebuilding will be so hard for people, and so uh, yeah, yeah. I know it's hard. It's been crazy lately. It feels like. I mean, maybe this happens in spurts, and it was like this when I was young. But yeah, I was just a kid and out of touch. But wow, it that's what I was about. To say. Yeah, yeah. It always, I think, because we were kids and just didn't pay attention as to what was going on. Yeah. It didn't really affect us if we had to. I mean, I grew up in South Carolina, so the most we had was rain, a little bit of snow. Or, well, not even snow. We had ice occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we never dealt with major, major uh, weather events. It does feel like, or at least I don't remember it. Again, it could just be because... We, we were kids, didn't pay attention. Yeah. Um, I remember we had to evacuate once and my mom was like, not wanting us to be scared, but she was like, why don't you get a bag and put some things? And I like put a bunch of toys and of my course. lightsaber, my fake <laughs> toy lightsaber. And I was ready to go. I was by the front door and my parents were like, come on. Yeah. Maybe some clothes and a yeah. brush and <laughs> right. <laughs> nope, got my toys. I'm good. Right, <laughs> my lightsaber. What more do I need? <laughs> it sounds like my kids. We, uh, when my daughter was young, she did a lot of modeling in Florida, and so we were constantly traveling with her work, and they had their little book bags, and that's what they would do. They would pile it full of all the toys and. They were so happy to take toys <laughs> that you can't play with in a car, you know, but they, yeah. they felt good having their toys and off we would go. Oh, that's funny. Kids are funny like that. Well, I think I've almost got the cuff done. Getting there. How far has everybody made it on their cast on so far? Almost to the end of my yeah. cup. Yeah. Toys are always neat. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, just before all the TVs came out in the cars. And we you could buy those, um, those little, I guess they were like 
I don't know. They were little TVs, but they weren't TVs like you, it was a, you could download videos to it or whatever. Mm -hmm. We had those. And then shortly after she started work, that was when she first started. And then a couple of years in, they finally had the iPads, the first iPads. Got about eight rows of ribbon done. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And let's see, I think you have about the worst. And I think you have about 12 or 13. So you're over the halfway mark. That's awesome. Awesome. I hope everybody has had fun with the cast on party. Uh, when Gavin and I, I, uh, yeah. that's my daughter. That's Mary. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Didn't need toys then, but you still took them. <laughs> we never did have like a, a iPad in the car or televisions, but we would, sometimes we would read to the kids and a few of the things we chose were kind of womp womp. They did not enjoy them. But if they got to pick the book, like we did the Diary of a Wimpy Kid yep. book yep. on a trip. And we did, oh, Bone, that uh, anime, uh, animated graphic novel, the Bone series. That's I don't, really good. Barry may know about that. She's really big into anime. That's a fun one. Uh, it was interesting for me and the kids loved it. And then... Uh, I remember one year we went to California and we were reading the Hunger Games. Like I didn't read it out loud. We just kind of traded. Around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did a lot of singing, didn't we? Fairy. I don't know if Fairy's still on or not, but yeah. We, uh, uh, she says she's never heard a bone. We'll have to look it up. It's fun. It's a Is fun it? graphic novel. Yeah. She, uh, she reads her, um, all of the comic, uh, uh, anime comics. What are they called? Fear manga, uh, manga. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, she well, goes, I say manga. Manga. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> the kids pronounce it manga. I don't. It's know. probably manga. <laughs> I I do not claim to know a pr proper pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we grew up with music. We we did a lot of music in the car, a lot of singing, even if we it was yeah manga. Um, but yeah, we did a lot of uh, singing in the car, and a lot of we have so many yeah we have so many funny stories from all of our time traveling, and the funny thing about it is is I am not a car person, but with kids you have to make it fun, and so we did. I am saying it right. Okay. She takes, <laughs> she takes Japanese. So she. Oh yeah. I knew I was saying it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's our, uh, she translates all of the Japanese names for all of the anime and manga and all of that. Well, the singing in the car together sounds so sweet and old fashioned. I think my mom would have loved it. That's what if I we grew had up. been that way, but we were all like, nah. <laughs> oh, see, that's how we grew up anytime because we traveled back and forth to Atlanta. I grew up in Greenville, so we traveled all the time back and forth to Atlanta and it was singing the whole way or like you said, reading books out loud or we would just make up funny stories and we had a very, um, very creative. My mother was definitely all about being creative. That's we awesome. were artsy people. We have some fun videos. I'll have to share some time on YouTube of some of our travels when the kids were little. <laughs> some of the oh, that would be would fun. Do. Yeah, they would do some very silly things. We tried to get them one time. Remember those travel bingo cards with the sliding shutters? Yeah, yeah. Those, are, I love bingo. That's a fun one. Um, we we would try to get them to say gift certificate. Very <laughs> saying, no, don't share them. They are so funny though. And one time, oh my goodness, one of the travels, Fairy, do you remember when you got hyped up on chocolate? Oh my. <laughs> she was about three or four at the time. And her, she was still in the car seat. Her feet are just going and she's just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I have that. I've recorded that one. Oh, funny. 
I think that my kids would kill me if I shared their videos. <laughs> Bye, Patty. Thank, Thank you, you for being here, Patty. Joining us. <laughs> she said those videos are private for a reason, but they're so funny. <laughs> You'll appreciate them one day. <laughs> my daughter is like family historian on her phone. She has things so recorded neat. from ages and she keeps it on her phone. Like my phone fills up and then I dump. Yeah. But yeah. she will every once in a while come up with a video from 20, 20 years, years ago, ago. <laughs> whatever, 10 yeah. years ago when we all had iPhones and they're yeah. so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I will save you the embarrassment today. <laughs> Fairy, are you casting on a sock? She's still working on her arm warmer, so that's probably what she's working on. Okay, the arm warmer idea, I want to do that. I, yeah. last night, I was trying, I do a Kindle, and so I just have to have one hand free, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that hand, I like try and contort the blanket around, and exactly. it <laughs> Yep, that is why I made arm warmers, because okay. I read a Kindle, and, um, and... I, my arms get so cold because I wear short sleeves to bed. And so I just pull my sleeves up and, and it's so easy to take that off. At first I was doing a cardigan, but then I had to get up to take the cardigan off. And I was like, yeah, that's not working. So, I mean, it's literally just a sock tube. No, it's a leg know, warmer. A leg warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll have to show you how I've been doing her cast ons for her. Um, just letting her get used to the motion of knitting. Mm. So I'll have to teach her how to cast on. So how long has she, your daughter been knitting? Oh, she just started. She just started. But she's making a lot. Cinnabar. Uh, uh, I haven't seen the Cinnabar shawl. Do you know what that is? I'll have to look that one up. I'm going to look it up while we talk here. So that's a good one for around the house and reading. Uh, I think I have. Oh, it's by it. Andrea Mallory. Wow. Oh, I've seen that. I feel like I should know it. I've seen it then. If it's okay. by her, I'm sure yeah, I've seen probably it. have seen it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a different shape, and it stays. It's on a brooch. I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah. The Is my it brooch? Is, it did, looks like it may be brioche. I own the pattern. <laughs> I didn't remember it. It is brioche. Okay. It is. Pretty. You'll have these mega sales once in a while and I'll grab a few. And that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing I haven't worked on is my pattern hoarding. Oh, it's half brioche, half garter. Half garter. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I'm still a pattern hoarder. I, I haven't funny. worked on that. I like to buy patterns and 90% of the time I don't use them or I try to use them, but I'm really bad about changing. I think that's just the designer in me. I like to support other, I mean, I like to support other designers though. So I will buy them and then, like I said, either change it or never do anything with it. Right. But that's cool. That, and I feel like that's worth it. If it gives the little inspiration to yeah. start something. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's worth it. Um, yeah. I agree. I, I do enjoy, I, it's been a while since I just did something for fun and just tried whatever. And that's yeah. what I need to do soon because, uh, I do stick with a pattern a lot and then it just feels so freeing to do my own thing. Finally. Yeah. yeah. And we all have, well, most of us, as, as long as you're not a very brand new knitter, we all have the skills to do freestyle knitting. Right. You know, if we've made enough sweaters, we know our numbers, we know our stitch count, we know our needle size. Mm -hmm. um, we can all make things without patterns. I think we all just like supporting the designers yeah. and like you said, getting the inspiration and everything. 
I have a yarn problem? No, I don't. No, fairy, I have a yarn problem. <laughs> I'm recovering. I had a big thing where I did stash busting this year, and I'm still working on that. I mean, I got some yarn for a blanket recently, but I've been doing really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, this is all old stash. Um, but I think like buying patterns, like I'm able to do this, this little knit along. Exactly. Together, do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's always nice to have a stash because I never know what I'm going to be. <laughs> I know she's, she's a doll. I love her. <laughs> um, it is a lot for, she said that my stash is a lot for the aesthetic of my craft room and it's sad, but true. <laughs> You look at my yarn and it's just so aesthetically pleasing. I don't want to use it because it looks pretty. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> to recover from yarn it's box. a wreck right now. Your mom would be miserable if she had the mess. I have a closet that's just jammed with stuff. And uh, you showed it recently. I love it. <laughs> It, oh, it's horrible. It's so you. It's so you, though. I pulled out some things. I'll show these. I'm going to give them, like, as we draw prizes. And I guess we should say, um, we'll be looking at Instagram posts, right? Yes. Yes. Are we I just kind of put all of this in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll be drawing from people that post using the hashtag, which... I know I've said it in my episode and Christy's saying it a lot. Um, Simply Irresistible Sock Cal 23. Yep. And so just write that and tag each of us in your post so we can yes. all see it. But one lucky winner, uh, I waded into that closet. I wanted to find yarn I really liked, you know? Yeah. And so I found this old woolen vine Ooh. yarn. Oh. Enjoy the silence. The and it has uh, Stellina in it. It does. It's from her blitzed base. I don't know that she does this anymore, but it was Bye, one of her. Bye, Jen. Thanks for big, stopping by. Bye. It was so good for you to be here. Um, I don't know that she does this anymore, this color yeah. much, but I loved it. And so, like, it's. I think it's kind of precious. That'll be and, beautiful. And so, one winner, I'll give that away on my um, at the end of the month. You know. Okay. But, but it'll be anyone. They they can be coming from more your YouTube or whatever that uh -huh. uses the hashtag on Instagram, but uh, any of your sock patterns plus this, and then to the other person, any of your shawl patterns plus this Ooh. would be more than enough for probably any of your patterns. Oh like, yeah. Most of my shawl patterns are one skein of fingering plus some scraps is what I right. like to say. However, if you have two skeins or three skeins, you can just continue the pattern repeat and yeah. make it larger. So that's yeah. what I thought. This gives yeah. a plenty of wiggle room uh, if your gauge got off or whatever. And this is Tosh Merino Light Beautiful Liar. Love. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty. And then this is Twist Light. I thought it was Merino Light, but it looks good together in yeah. fur. Yeah. And that, that can be the contrast. Yeah, that'll make something gorgeous. Although you do have one that uh, you use like a gradient or self-striping yarn as that contrast color. And I, you could still do that with this, but yeah. man, I like the look of the self-striping. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I uh, had fun doing all of those shawl patterns. And it's so funny because I don't even wear shawls. Though I did make one and Fairy has confiscated it. She has claimed it as her own. So I've got to make another one. But I made a huge, it was 13 skeins of um, uh, Wool of the Andes. So oh, wow. basically six and a half skeins. Um, but it was huge. And it when we went to Chicago this summer, it got passed around from Every female that was there wore it, and it was, yeah, she does. She wears all the shawls that I make, um, but yeah, we um, that one was definitely popular. So I have a feeling I'm going to be making a lot of those, and with it being so big, mm -hmm. it takes time. But yeah. I think everybody wants one of those, so have to make some more. Well, well I, go ahead. No, no you go ahead. ahead. <laughs> 
I was gonna say, thinking, that's a good stash buster too. It a is. large doll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we are going to sign off. I We do need to go over the details. Can you come? Oh, I know I can, sweetie, <laughs> but you just look so cute in it. She's always got it wrapped around those tiny little shoulders of hers. Um, okay, so the details on the cow. Thank you for joining us, first of all. It has been so nice to chat with all of you and cast on with all of you. And the deal or the um, cow is for any Simply Irresistible sock pattern. And I will link those in the description box after the uh, video goes to YouTube or posts on YouTube. Um, we will be doing giveaways. Michelle and I both will be doing giveaways. Make sure you follow us both on YouTube. Michelle's handle, I will put that in the description and follow us both on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, Archer Designs with an S and the number one after that. And Michelle, yours is? My so-called handmade life on both. Yep. Yep. And we will both be doing a giveaway. Um, I think I'm doing two giveaways and Michelle's doing two giveaways. And if you use the hashtag um, simply irresistible socks cal 23 um, we will be drawing from that over on Instagram. And um, yes, I'm going to be giving away sock yarn and a project bag and any of my patterns that you choose um, from my shop. Best sock pattern to learn to knit socks. I do agree with that. If you if, thank you, Catherine, for saying that. This is these are all great for new sock knitters because there is no heel. So if you're new to the sock knitting world, um, these are great for that as well. Um, but I think that is it, Catherine. I hope you and your husband are doing okay. Um, I just want to pop that in real quick. And I am so glad we got to do this, Michelle. This has Me been too. so much fun. We'll have to start doing live together more often just for the fun of it. It really wasn't that hard. I kind yeah. of dreaded. I thought I would screw it up somehow. But this isn't hard. It's <laughs> not hard. Anybody can do it. Except I couldn't do it on my phone. That's why we were a few minutes <laughs> late today. <laughs> I learned the hard way. I have to do it on my iPad. So hopefully the quality is okay. On my oh iPad. yeah, I think you is look. It? I wouldn't okay. know you were on an iPad. Okay, good, 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 good. Well, again, thank you all for joining us uh, from all over. I'll join the next one. Yes, that would be awesome. I tried to get her to join this one, but she's she just, has all month, you know. Yeah, exactly. She could still join. She could still join. Well, definitely post all of your progress pics, post your finished. Um, we're going to be drawing from anything. As long as you're using that hashtag, um, healing well, good. Scans have been great. Yay! I love you, Catherine. Um, glad to hear all of that. Um, yeah, just join us on Instagram with the hashtags. And uh, we've got a whole month to join in. So look forward to seeing everybody's progress over there. Thanks, Rachel. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for joining. It has been a blast. I adore you. And I hope that everybody goes and checks out your channel and uh, would love to have everybody, if anybody's new here, check out my channel and get to know us a little better. I think everyone who watches my channel knows your channel by now. Oh, do they? Because <laughs> I talk about you a lot, but yeah. definitely if and I talk about you, you don't all know the time Christy. Too, so hopefully everybody has checked you. I like to share the podcasters that I truly, truly watch. Yeah. And you're one of those that I truly, truly watch. And like I said, as soon as I see my alert, I'm like, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully your new one will come up and I can finish working on this sock. And oh, yeah, any minute. Yeah. <laughs> Thank good. you for inviting me to do Absolutely. this with you. 
I appreciate Well, this was your idea. I guess so, but it was. Yes. It was your idea, and I love it. Thank you so much for thinking of it. I appreciate it. Hope everybody enjoys the patterns and enjoys the, the finished objects and everything. It'll be exciting to see everybody's thoughts on it. Definitely. Yep. All right. Well, I guess I will see you soon. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Christy. Bye.